Will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Mm -hmm. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know you, where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Yes. Amen. And may the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and doing of his word. Amen. For his word is a lamp unto our path. Amen. If you need some encouragement, go to the word. Amen. If you need to be lifted up, go to the word. Hallelujah. If you're feeling down, go to the word. It will encourage you. It will lift you up. Amen. We just want to welcome the presence of the Lord into this place. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, Lord. And we honor you today. For you are high and lifted up. There is none like you. We bless you, Lord God.
lift up a praise unto the risen King. Hallelujah, our Lord and Savior. He is yet alive. Hallelujah. We lift you up. We lift you up, oh God. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up for your good and your merciful. Hallelujah. And your kind. Hallelujah. You're forgiving, oh God. We thank you. We lift you up. We lift you up, we lift you up, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're worthy to be praised. There is none like you, hallelujah. And we honor you today. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for saving us. Anybody glad to be saved, hallelujah. Anybody glad that you know him in the pardon of your sins, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody glad that you got an a, a, a advocate? Hallelujah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit that will fight for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. That will lead and guide you. Hallelujah. That will sit with you in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. That will minister to you when you're down and out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he will remind you of who you yeah. are and whose you are. Hallelujah. Yes, you will. When the devil got you backed up in the corner, the Holy Spirit will remind you who you are. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. And we are children of the Most High God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for adopting us into your family. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're a part of a righteous family? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. A strong family. Hallelujah. A mighty family. Hallelujah. A family that sticks together. Hallelujah. And we got a father that's looking out for us all. Yeah. And he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll be with us until the end. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So glad that I know him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And as our pastor prepares to come up, come on, let's just begin to meditate on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who is he to you? Who is he to you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is he your Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, I bless your name. Is he your all in all? Do you trust him with everything? Hallelujah. How well do you know him? Lord, I bless you. He knows you. Yes. How well do you know him? We're always learning. Hallelujah. With each trial, with each step, with each day, we're learning. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands in the building. Amen. Everybody just lift your hands in the building. Lord, we praise you today. We honor your very presence. Um, can you mute the green, Sister Deborah? Mute the green and the orange. Thank you. Father, we bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just standing in the presence of the Lord today. Father, as we come to this place, oh God, of worship that you have set for us to come meet today. Father, we give you the honor. We give you the praise. Father, thank you for allowing us to arise on this morning. We woke up, oh God, and our minds began to function. Father, no good of our own, but it's by your grace. When we woke up, we had the full use and activity of thought, vision, mind recollection. Lord, nobody but you can orchestrate a life. And Father, as believers today, Father, we acknowledge that in your presence today, that you have been good to us, oh God. You have been great, oh God. Your wonders, amen, cease to amaze us of how good you have been, how you reward us, oh God. Not just for a lot of things, but just a little things. Your Bible says that you are a reward of them that diligently seek you. 
Father, we bless you today because we have not been perfect. Father, we have seen, oh God, some of our error of our ways throughout the years. Father, we desire to do what is pleasing in your sight. We desire that you get the glory. We desire that you get the praise. Father, forgive us today of any of our sins or shortcomings. Father, forgive us, oh God, of our wayward acts and deeds. Lord, we are but mere clay that you fashioned so that we would bring forth fruit. And Father, oh God, help us to be more like you. Lord, this is our prayer. I decrease, hide me behind the veil. Father, oh God, we are but clay. And Father, we are but dust, oh God, in thy presence. Oh God, help us to be more like you. And for that, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Bless you all that are here today and those that may be watching. Amen. Through Facebook. Amen. We welcome you to our Amen worship service today. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Amen. And we pray that God has been blessing you. Amen. And revealing to you, Amen, his purpose for our lives. Amen. How many know we all have a purpose for our lives? And sometime throughout this walk, throughout this journey, we can get lost along the route. Today, if you're writing down early, we're going to talk about numbers. Numbers. We have a granddaughter, two granddaughters that just turned a year older in the month of October. One turned 13, the other turned 10, I believe, nine. Amen. We have been in Lakeland, Florida for 18 years as of this month. It is our church anniversary, 18. Somebody say the number 18. And then you can throw out your own number of those that have either come to this ministry or supported this ministry or even the age of, 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 of what you are now. So I'm 52 and so the Lord birthed abiding branch over 18 years ago in my spirit. How many know numbers matter? Numbers mean things. Numbers Amen. They run down the street of seasons and times. Now, how many know there's a season and a time for all things? Amen. amen. And so today's message, amen, it talks about how long it would take for us to touch Jesus. Immediately, amen, the word pops in my spirit, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years being an outcast and with a blood condition amen she finally after exhausted all of the doctors and the lawyers and all the people the physicians all that she could 12 years she said enough is enough anybody in the house ever felt like enough was enough amen i got a couple witnesses and even now, you might be going through something and you're saying, Lord, when is this season or this trial, this dilemma, when is this sickness, this, when is this famine, when is this drought, when is it going to be over? Many of us have questions that we've asked God. And many of us are hanging on the hinges, amen, of an open answer, amen, not yet revealed by God. And how many know God doesn't reveal everything to us all at once? He gradually takes us through cycles, life cycles, like a metamorphosis, if you will. He takes us by the hand and he leads us like a good shepherd. 
Could you imagine if he gave you all of your life's experiences at one time? Not only would you not learn anything, but you would overload. And how many know the Bible says that he'll put no more on us, what, than we're able to stand, take, withhold, or to bear? So today, amen, I want to talk to us, amen, and I feel my, my, my counseling spirit, if you will, today. How long does it take us to touch him? Somebody say him. If you've never grown up in a church family, then it might take you a little longer to find Jesus. If you've grown up in a church family, amen, and uh, hallelujah, I I'm just going to use this, amen. If you're in the building today and you're here, how many know you should participate in the worship experience? Amen. If somebody say amen, say amen. Because <laughs> we have knowledge of why we're here. But you have people that may have not been close to growing up to God. Don't have a clue to what it means to worship or put their hands together. What am I clapping for? I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I'm talking about the ones that are distant from God. But those of us that know him, how many, I said know him. Remember our, t our topic is what? How long it takes to what? Touch him. But to us, to the ones that know him, how many know this should be easy to worship him? Yes, it should be easy to praise him. Now, now, now watch this. We've gotten so accustomed to being, amen, accustomed to a knowledge of God we don't even care anymore how we act in front of God. Well, that's, that's one of the deepest things I've ever said. Because guess what? If God is all-knowing, somebody say he is. If he's all-powerful, somebody say you dog all right. He is. If, if he's all-seeing, that means even in the darkness, what is light to him? If God knows everything, how many know you cannot escape Doing anything where? In his presence. And with full knowledge of that, I have to be careful to do certain things around the presence of God. And I'm mindful today that everyone, I said this at a funeral, everybody is not on the same level. I understand. We're all different. And someone would make the argument, I'm not going to church anymore. Why should I go to church and I can even worship at home? Hallelujah. There's too many hypocrites in the church. There's too many people on their phones at church. And they're not on their phones watching you live at church, they're on their phone with their friends. They're on their phones, they've been gossiping. Amen, I'm reminded of a woman that said that to the pastor, pastor, I'm not coming back anymore. Every time I look around, someone is on the other road texting somebody or they're doing this. There's too many hypocrites in the church. Pastor said, one thing, do something for me before you leave. He filled a glass up with water and he told the woman, to walk around the church three times, be careful not to spill any. She walked around the first time, the pastor in the distance watching her. She walked around the second time, the pastor saying, I don't know if she's going to make it. Third time she came around back to the pastor, amen, the pastor said, how did you do? She said, pastor, I managed to keep all the water you gave me in the glass. And so the moral of that story is, if you focus on what's in front of you, somebody say hallelujah. I ain't got time for who else don't show up. I ain't got time to be thinking about what my neighbor is doing. I've got to keep my mind on what? Jesus. She managed to make it without any distractions. How many know your family can be? A distraction, your, your job, amen. Even, watch this, even your first ministry, your family, your house can be a distraction. The 
The problem is you can't be turning around like no name lady. Y'all know her, Lot's wife. You can't be turning around being distracted by things, amen, that have no validity on your progress. Mm. Regardless if you don't have an answer, move forward. Hallelujah. Because we walk by, can you imagine, I'm going to come back to it, can you imagine if we didn't pursue or move forward depending on an answer? Amen. You would be still stuck within a number of years ago. Amen. The Lord said 18 years ago we would be setting up a ministry of Lakeland, Florida. Amen. As I rewind, amen, back to that church setting. Amen. Can you imagine if I, I stood there and heard him and I didn't move forward, but I still, amen, to God, how are you going to do it? Well, God, how, how, how are we going to do it? I would still be asking what? God, how are you going to move us? But how many know we don't walk by sight? You walk by your knowledge of who God is. He is a rewarder what, of them. I'm trying to get to the sermon. Them that diligently seek him. If you don't want nothing from God, then don't ask God for nothing. Now, hallelujah. But if you want something from your father, amen, what kind of daddy would give you stones when he can give you good gifts? And I know the future looks like I don't know how it's going to happen. But how many know I ain't got to know how? I just got to know who. <laughs> Somebody say, who did? God did. Okay, I think I'll use that one. But our God is who? Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I woke up mom encouraging from a dream. Where do you find Jehovah Jireh in the scripture? Amen. And I'll answer it in the revelation now. He's everywhere in the word. Oh, because all throughout your life, he's provided for you. Hallelujah. Every step of the way, God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even if you don't know tomorrow. Because I'm the God of today. Amen. And tomorrow. And if you think about yesterday, I'm him too. Hallelujah. How do we get to touching him when I don't know him? Here, the woman, amen. We're back to the text, amen. The woman with the issue of blood, 12 Long years with a blood condition. How many know that she exhausted everything, even her own oxygen? Because how many know if you're being drained of blood that you don't have no strength? When everything has been, amen, exhausted out of you, amen, the only thing you have is your faith. So here now she touches the very garment of Jesus. Somebody say the hymn. Yeah. And the scripture text, and this is not our main focus, but I think this is important. When she touched the hymn, Jesus turned around. First lady, we were talking about this the other day. Amen. Uh, virtue left him. Virtue left him when she touched his hymn. Uh, I'm going somewhere. She didn't touch him, but she touched the hymn of what was on him. Now, I can't go back and rewind this, but... She touched the very garment that he was wearing. So that means not only was he blessed, but the garment he, he, he wore was blessed. Y'all got it? Watch this. We're going deeper. So how can I touch him when I can only get to his clothes? Mm. So I say the physical. I got to be able to touch his heart. H-I-M. I got to be able to touch his heart, not his person. Y'all hear me? We're so busy with trying to get in touch with people that we have lost touch with God. Do y'all hear me? We're so a society of, of, of social media to where we, it, it'll kill us if we don't reveal to everybody what we're going through. We can't exist without texting people and letting them know what's going on. And I ain't got to be no prophet to tell you that. I mean, it's just the truth. We're so self-centered. We don't even know that what? We're self-centered. You know, you can scroll down your Facebook live and you got people on there just revealing 
their innermost, their deepest thoughts to people that they don't even know behind a camera. Are y'all y'all listening to what I'm saying? Why in the world do you think you've got to qualify who you are to somebody that don't know you? Amen. Boy, I'm talking good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I hear something. Somebody help me. Hallelujah. Somebody got music on. Just somebody help me. Hallelujah. It matters. It matters to God how we touch him, how we approach him. Do y'all understand? God is not like people. And we have put people over God. And it is an abomination in his sight. You would rather worship people than worship a God. Now, we're about to go to the text, but when she touched the hem of his garment, guess what? He turned around, Brother Todd. Some of y'all know the text. He was, he was on his way because Jairus' daughter was almost dead. But how many know something critical got to turn around and meet your need? Because that's critical to you as well. Twelve years, she got her healing, she got her deliverance. And now we're at the number 18. It's symbolic to us being here in ministry. 18 years, amen. I think this is our anniversary. God bless you, uh, Mr. Warren. We're still praying for you and your family. 18 years is a symbol of bondage. Mm -hmm. Luke the 13th, um, actually go to Luke 1 and 35. And I need somebody to read this for me. Luke 1 and 35, and I want you to read it with clarity. Last week, we wanted to talk about the spirit of understanding. Y'all remember that? Who is the God, amen, that understands everything? God, Jehovah God, Jehovah Jireh. The spirit is, he carried the spirit of understanding. Today, we're going to talk about the spirit of the power of the highest. That is who we're going to talk about, amen. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ever ask or think pertaining to the power that worketh in you. And we're talking about that Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost power. So read 1 and 35 for me. This is the one that we're trying to get to know. I want you to understand, y'all, it's different than knowing people. People who didn't die for you. Hello. And, and, and watched a, a wonderful movie yesterday with the fam. You know, and, and, and um, shout out to um, what's the name of the movie? Black Adam. This is, this is a wonderful movie. And, and his son sacrificed, you know, for the father and the father, amen, because he didn't sacrifice. He ended up being kind of like an evil person without direction. How many know it's only one person that's able to sacrifice his life for all of us? His name was Jesus. There's no other religion that an entity, a person sacrificed themselves for all of humanity. Do y'all know that? There's no other re religion that even speaks about that. But Christianity is the only reason that Christ came and died for all. I'm talking about the power of the highest. <laughs> you, you're talking about power and deuteronomy's power and dynamite power. Nobody can go thank you, Pop. Amen. Gold man's bonds mean give you deliverance from bondage except Jesus. So the title, the theme, amen, is how long does it take to get to know him? Mm -hmm. Some got saved when they were young, grew up in church. And that word was put in them. So when they got old, the Bible says what? Train up a child. And the way when they get old... It'll never depart. I don't care what they listen to now. I don't care. You've got to keep that word, what? In their spirit. And this culture, oh my, and I'm trying to move. This culture is so contrary to the wisdom and the word of God. And I feel the pause right now because so many of our people are being deceived. 
When I, when I mean people, I'm talking about society. Last year, there was a, a young man who his lifestyle did not represent Christ. Don't know if he was raised. Some of the delivery of the trial says that he was a God-fearing man. But this God-fearing man, I won't give names, but you can go Google it. He went through a parade, drove a, a truck through a parade, killed six people, injured over 40 people. And now, a year later, his trial is up and he's representing himself. He chose not to have nobody else represent him. And it's on your social media outlets even now. And to watch and to listen to this, it is really incredible. Because he's trying to justify what he did. And how many know there is only, the only justification is truth. Now I'm not saying God can't move in this and I'm not saying that, that he can't be saved or he can't find deliverance. But we are responsible for what? Our action. Who am I talking to? We are responsible for what we do. That is why when you know what to do, how many know we shouldn't do wrong or evil? Attaching yourself to the wrong person or group of people or gangs or cults or religious faction that does not, amen, represent all of Christianity. How many know that's wrong and it's going to lead to bad stuff? Well, I can't talk no plainer than what I just said. But we got to listen. Somebody say listen to the word that's been put in our spirit. Hallelujah. The word has power if we listen. Somebody say, I'm going to listen. How do I get to know him? By listening. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Read that first one. Then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Mm -hmm. For that reason, the Holy Child shall, shall be called the Son of God. Mm. Keep reading. And listen, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. So not only is Jesus called the Son of God, the power in the highest, the writer in, in Luke tells us to even listen, your family, watch this, your family has been chosen. Y'all see that? Your family has been chosen to be introduced into this wonderful line of believers that ultimately and eternally will be with God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And you can break all those things down and say we've been adopted, amen, and we wasn't the chosen, amen, but we've been grafted in. You can go all do all the research. But God wants your family Amen. To know that not just the body of believers, amen, we are family, but the but your normal family, amen, is connected to the blood of Jesus. So don't stop telling them the word. Give it to them what? When they want to hear it and when they don't. Because regardless if the food they eat it or not, you still got to present the gospel and the gospel is the food. Here, let's get to the text. I don't want to bore you. Luke 13. Luke 13. God bless you. My cousin is on. Amen. Luke 13, the first verse. Somebody say a call to repentance. Not only is 18, amen, that number is symbolism. Amen. Is it a, it's a symbolism of adulthood. A graduation. More responsibilities. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody asked the question, why does the righteous suffer? Anybody ever asked that? Why do right why I gotta go through this? What did I do to deserve this? 
in your recollection, did I do somebody wrong? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come here in scripture. It says, amen. God, who did sin? Remember that scripture? When the person was ill in the family or there was a sickness. Lord, why did this have to come upon my family? How many know God allows, somebody say God allows, certain things to bring people, what, to repentance? Number one. Because without repentance, guess what? We can't be, what, forgiven of our sins. Wow, isn't that deep? You can't just go to God all the time without even saying, Lord, forgive me of yesterday. Because guess what? How can he hear you if you got, what, bitterness in your heart? Hmm. Here it is, amen. Uh, number one, God, amen, allows temporal disasters to happen for various reasons. I've already read the first one because he allows people to be able to repent. Number one. Number two, testing. 40 years in the wilderness, it's a time of testing. 18 years, I believe the Lord has been testing us, amen, to see, amen, where we are. How I many know if you never get tested on a quiz, guess what? You can't pass. Some trials, tests come what? To make you strong. Some other tests and trials come to defeat you. Those are the ones by the enemy. But God's trial says what? They don't come to tear you down, but to build you up. Jude said, best, amen, build yourselves up, what? In the most holy faith. Here it is, the third and last one. After it leads people to repentance, amen, after, amen, it's a period of testing, I believe it's a learning process. Football tournament coming up December 3rd. This is our 14, 15 year we've been doing it. Amen. We have learned how to do things better, but for the last 13 years, we have consistently, somebody say consistently, given opportunity for people to hear the gospel and about forgiveness. How I many know God going to give you different platforms, but it's up to you to use them? Yes, hallelujah. Somebody say, I need a miracle. Here we are, the uh, 13th chapter of Luke, first verse. Everybody just say amen. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners. Above all the Galileans, because of they suffered such things. Tell you nay, but except ye repent, somebody say repent, ye shall all likewise perish. How I many know we have to learn how to repent? Repentance is good. Amen. How many know that? It keeps you close to God. Amen. Yes. Draw me nearer to you, Lord. The only way to be drawn to him is to have a reason to come to him. That's why it is important, amen, that your sins be forgiven so that they can have remission of sins. Hallelujah. Because if there's no forgiveness of sins, how can God take away your sin? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said, or four verse, or those 18, somebody say 18, upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were all sinners? Above all men that dwell in Jerusalem, there was an incident, and I didn't think it was so important to kind of mention it, but just like this man that plowed through this parade, were they sinners? Hmm. Did they need to die? Hmm. It kind of makes you think. Look at the world around us. Who dies and who doesn't? Who has the right to live and who should die? How many know it's important to know that it's only one person that can take life? What did, what did, what did Job say? The Lord giveth. And the Lord take it away. Here it is. Hallelujah. So these 18 people that was in Siloam, they fell. And above all men that dwell in Jerusalem, the question was asked, amen, as Jesus is telling, amen, this, uh, this kind of story. 
He says, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So repentance is not just for sinners. It's for everybody. The same delight. Six verse that Jesus tells this parable. Is a parable a truth or is it fiction? A parable is a story relative to a situation that happened for real. It's kind of like a type or an example that kind of brings the narrative so that you can grasp or understand. So Jesus tells this parable. He spake unto this uh, people. He said, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought the fruit thereon, and he found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years, somebody say years, yeah. I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and findeth none. Cut it down, why encumbereth it on the ground? How I many of the Lord gives you season, seasons to do some stuff? It is up to you how you make the fruit grow. Hmm. Guess what? Every tree that's planted, you won't be able to count the number of fruit thereon. But as long as you plant it in the right season, amen, the counter of the picker, amen, is gone. How many know that? Like a farmer, he plants and he sows in the right season to reap a harvest. You don't reap the harvest of what you plant. God does. So many people are trying to reap. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Help me today, Lord. So many people are trying to reap God's harvest. How many know you got your own harvest? And how many know God has his harvest? Oh, I feel you, Holy Ghost. What do you mean, preacher? How can you have a harvest? Yes, because guess what? If you birth something... And God says it's yours. Guess what? That's your harvest. But he told, he told Pilate, give what belonged to him, right? The money on the coin, whose face? And then what belongs to God, give it to God. So God doesn't, you're not, you're not bargaining with God for people. Mm. You're, you're not in a war against God for produce. Pastor, where are you going with this sermon? Guess what? So many people, amen, started out this race trying to do good, trying to plant seeds. But along the way, they started fighting God instead of fighting the real enemy. Because the real enemy that sold them, sold words in their spirit. They caused families to break up. They sold discord with the brethren. Guess what? The father of lies, Beelzebub, the devil, amen, has what? Made you think he's the real God. So not only are you not fighting the devil anymore, amen, he's convinced you he doesn't exist. So the only God you're fighting is the God that gave your son for your life. Hmm. What's a complex word? Mario, are you following me? Amen. So if our younger people can get it, guess what? We should be able to get it too. Somebody say amen. amen. How long does it take to know him? Mm. Some people get it quick. Some people it take a lifetime. But how many know soon as you get it, what the Bible say? Harden not your heart. So that means let the word, somebody say the word. Let the word touch your heart. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I feel you, Holy Ghost. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart. What does that really mean? Come on, Tracy, exegeted. I believe it means, somebody said, I believe it means. I believe it means that I won't let nobody, amen, confuse who God is because I've hidden it in my heart. I can't even fight. Think about it. Once you hide something, guess what? You know where it's at, but don't nobody else do. And I've convinced myself that I'm not going to let nobody, amen, be over the word that's in my life. Amen. Nobody should take precedence over the word. Hallelujah. Woo. Even family tried to complicate, complicate and compromise to make you think that the word is not more important than them. 
How many say, in, in all your getting, get an understanding. Without the word, there is no uh, conception, amen, of immaculate conception. There is no ideology of a God that came, amen, to send his son that we might be saved. So I thank him for his word. Somebody say, I thank him. How long does it take to know God, to know him? How long, how long, how long? Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. God bless you, sis. Hallelujah. Watch this. Even when you know a little about him, I grew up in the church. Watch this. When I was old, probably about 18, I went out and started doing my own thing. Grew up in the doing my, but the Lord, he kept saving my life. He kept forgiving me of my sins, even when I didn't even ask him. Hello. He's like, I got a purpose and I got a plan for them, even if they don't understand my word. So David, when he finally grasped it, he said, thy word have I hid in my heart. I'm not going to let nobody deceive me. Here it is, the end of this parable. Amen. What verse, D? Eight. And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone. This year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Mm, mm, mm. I wrote something down. God will use opportunity for you to come to repentance. He'll allow certain things to happen in your life for you to be drawn to him. Y'all see that? And because of little Tracy's passing, I have drawn closer to God. I'm not saying God killed him. I'm going to say God used a situation to say, Tracy, you've got to draw closer to me. And in that, guess what? Others can come nigh to him. Because God wants to, somebody said this to yourself, put it on your, your, your heart. God wants to use me. Come on, everybody do a touch your heart. God wants to use me. Mm. The disciples changed the world by spreading the gospel. How many want to change the world? Amen. By just doing something for God. Life changing. And I believe in this season, God is bringing us to a place of life changing kingdom work. Because how many know time is running out? If you bear no fruit, cut it down. But if there's a hope, hallelujah, if there's a chance that when I come back by, I see fruit, I'm going to bless it. Woo! If I, if I come back by and I see a little seed that you have planted, even in a famine, hallelujah, I'm going to bless it. Because I've seen your faithfulness. Oh, yeah. Press away when folk wasn't coming. Hallelujah. Oh, you were diligent. You were faithful. Hallelujah. Over a few things. I'm going to bless you. Why? Because I am God. Here now, I'm moving to the main text. Amen. And I want you to tell to yourself that the fruit I sowed. Come on now. The fruit I sowed. God knew how much my harvest would be. The thing now, hey amen, before I move, hey amen, to the gist of our message, the thing now is how can I get the bag? How many know what the bag is? The bag is the money. How can I be successful? How can I get the bag? Some people doing it with bitcoins. Some people doing it with their own branding of their, what they are creative and able to make. So, so how many know you can get rich just by being on social media in your living room doing crazy stuff? Mm -hmm. So how many know that if you plant seed, it, it don't even matter what season it is when it comes to God. Watch this. When you plant it, he going to bless it because you did it out of faith. Thank you, Lord. Here it is. This is the gist of the sermon. Amen. Somebody say 18 years. And he was teaching. I'm at 10 verse 
Amen. 13 for one, those that have just joined. Amen. And he was teaching of, of Luke. He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Here now we touch back on this spirit. For the last two weeks, we've been dealing with what God, what type of spirit God is. So today is the spirit of the mighty God, the power in the highest. Somebody say the power in the highest. God's power, this is the application for it. God's power, the Holy Spirit, can accomplish things through us that we cannot do ourselves. Did y'all hear me? What God is about to do, amen, thank you, Lord, I hear you. I think, I think this is the Lord. What God is about to do, you cannot do on your own because, amen, you were too worried about the season. But God looks, oh, man, it's tying together. Remember the scripture you read, power in the highest, that thing that's going to come upon you what, and overshadow you. I did this. Not you. So when God does it, guess what? Give him the glory. Amen. Give him the credit. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God, this is the Lord's doing what? And it is marvelous in our eyes. But the people, when they have seen their own fruit, and they get entangled by their own weeds, amen, and think, this is what I have done. But how many know that God won't let nobody glory in his sight? That's why when the devil looked at himself, <clears throat> he forgot that he wasn't created by himself, but God created him. How many know God created you to bless him, Amen. not bless yourself? Amen. I don't know who that's for, but so many people are blessing themselves that it, it's, it, it's, it's just crazy in his nostrils. Arrogant and narcissistic. This guy representing himself, you killed six people. You can't win. And guess what? The crazy thing, you think that because you can stand up here and testify that you got more experience than people that have gone years to school for to represent you. That's why we need Jesus, what, to represent us, right? <laughs> here, I, I got to move the clothes. Watch this. This is the the good part of this sermon. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So many people so messed up about the Sabbath day. Oh, you got to keep it holy. Can't do no work. Amen. How many know that the Sabbath, we know it's Saturday, Sabbath in Spanish. Amen. But in the Western world, guess what? We worship, amen, Sabbath where? On Sunday. Everybody know that? Somebody say amen. And guess what? If your donkey is in the ditch on Saturday, are you on Saturday or Sunday, are you going to leave them there any day of the week? You're going to go get them. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Why? Because it's right to do. We can be so foolish with man-made laws. Amen. Watch this man-made laws that we forget that Christ came to do away with the law. Even the own law that Jesus put in the Torah Amen. How many know when Jesus came, grace, amen, wiped away all of that? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know what my problem is, y'all. Every sermon, I try to compact the whole Bible in one message. I finally figured it out. <laughs> I go way around the world. I'm going to stay in Spain for a while. I go right way around the world to get back to repentance. Watch this, amen. And, and when we're at 11, and behold, there was a woman, somebody say a woman, which had a spirit of infirmity. Wow. 18 years. Mm. And was bowed together and could no wise lift up herself. She was in bondage, y'all, to her own body. Boy, somebody should have caught that. How many know we're in bondage today of our own mind? Somebody hurt you 20 years ago. You're still holding on to that stuff. You, you won't even allow yourself to breathe. You won't even allow yourself to be free. T.D. said it best, amen, die out loose. But guess what? So many people, amen, still bound. 
And I think it could have been everybody loosed, not just a woman, because there's so many women's liberation and women's rights and all this stuff. We're still fighting among ourselves. Who should be free? <laughs> when how many know Jesus came to set everybody free? Amen. Not from some group that you just made with letters in it. Watch this. Because when you make a group of your own accord, guess what? Then you determine, amen, the rules and the laws. So I thank God that I didn't make myself. Woo! My body belongs. <laughs> Somebody say, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not that you are not your own. But you've been bought with the price. Therefore glorify God. Where? In your body. Thank you Jesus. I'm rounding up this hill y'all. What verse did? She could not lift herself up. The 12th verse says. And when Jesus saw her. He called her to him. What's our theme today y'all? How long does it take. To get to know him. First, we talked about the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. She never touched his body. She touched his clothes. Here now, Jesus goes by, sees a woman bowed over in bondage. Bowed over. Hey. Mm. How many know Jesus see everybody in bondage? But the problem is we are not trying to be seen by Jesus. We're trying to hide. And where are they? Hallelujah. Don't you know you can't hide from an almighty God that made you to have fellowship, amen, and communion with him at the meeting place? Amen. The only reason you come to a worship building, hallelujah, is because we want a fellowship and have community, hallelujah. But give me a building without a roof, hallelujah, so I can see you, God. Amen. Our topic today is how long does it take to get to, you would think Adam knew him. Mm. You would think Adam knew, amen, the rules and the regulations, amen, were for coming to God and right relationship, but he blamed the woman. Before I even woke her up, I made you, Adam. I thought we was cool. <laughs> we used to walk by the cool. And what happened to our relationship, Adam? The woman you gave me. Somebody say, Lord, I'll never forget what you've done for me. And I, I get it, y'all. Watch this. I got it. I know I got to quit. Amen. If, you, if, if you've never had a relationship with God, then God ain't brought you from nowhere. So you have nothing to bounce, amen, your evidence on who God is. I get it. Oh, but once you come to know who he is. Oh, somebody wrote a song. I've come to know him. In a very real way. I know he's a doctor, Brother Todd. In a sick room. Yes. Anybody ever had some court case? I know him to be a lawyer. Where? In the courtroom. Anybody ever need? For, he's a baker when I need him. He's an on time God. Thank you, Dottie Peoples. Woo, here it is. Amen. We're moving to close. Amen. Jesus sees this woman. Amen. That had been bound down by bondage. Jesus saw her. He called her to him. And said unto her, woman, hallelujah. Now I, I don't need to know nothing. Hallelujah. I don't need to know, amen, what you've been through. I don't need to know, amen, what problems you have. Amen, what gossiping you're doing. All I know is I see your condition. We like to come to God and give him all this stuff. But just come to him just as you are. Hallelujah. God don't need your rhetoric. God don't need your foolishness. God don't even need a dialogue. Hallelujah. That's the problem. We want to talk it out. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to work it out. How many know God is already working out? Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. You're dirty and you're filthy. What can you say to God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Psalms. What can I render? Hallelujah. For all and his benefits he has done. Oh, somebody say, I'm going to give him praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him glory. Hallelujah. Ooh. I'm trying to quit. God bless you. 
Sister Mia, man, I'm so proud of you. Hey, Amen. Got her nursing degree. Hallelujah. How I many know it don't take a whole lot? Just be faithful. Somebody said, I'm going to be faithful of a few things. Je Jesus saw her. Come here, woman. Hallelujah. Don't say a word. Just come here. Uh, just come here. Just be in my, I want you in my presence. Oh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I need you in my presence, hallelujah. I need my presence as fullness of joy at the right hand presence forevermore. Just come here, hallelujah. Just draw to me a little bit, hallelujah. Stop running away from me. I know you're hurting, hallelujah. I know you're broken. Come, just sit with my presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you don't see how it's going to work out. Just come here. Hallelujah. I ain't got the right clothes. Just come here. Hallelujah. I didn't do my hair today. Just come here. Hallelujah. 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 I ain't got the right clothes to be in that church. Just come here. I'm not of the right age. Just come here. Uh, Master, what can I do to it? obtain eternal life? Go do this, go do this, go do this, go do this. And that the rich man, seeing that he couldn't do it, he turned to, come here, hallelujah. Problem is, we don't want to come to him. We would rather be distant from him than obedient to him. All he said is, come here. Huh? Hallelujah. Do y'all see that big word, obedience? And he didn't say, come here in condemnation. He just said, come here. But the devil will make you think that God is mad at you and God can't bless you and God can't forgive you of what you did or what you wanted to do. He says, come here. Call it. He says, come here. Call it. Just like last week. Y'all remember what we said after we went offline? Just like last week. But all God told me was, come here. Listen to me. Come unto me, all what ye that labor. And I have it laid and bound over. Oh, I got to quit. Almost ready for worship. Come here. Come here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love video games. Deep stay there in the scripture. I love video games. And Pac-Man and Galaga was one of my favorite games. My dad said we could go to the store. Remember we were talking about numbers and seasons and times. He said, don't be there all day. Come back. And y'all know Pac-Man. You're going to get an extra man. Miss Pac-Man, you're going to get an extra woman with a bow on her head. I kept winning, y'all. I kept winning. Everybody want to win. In my keeping me winning, I forgot about what my father said. When I left to go to the store, Deke, it was broad daylight. Probably was 12 a.m. I'm just joking. Came back home. The, the, it was dark. I didn't even want to walk in the door. But guess what? I was a winner, y'all, on the Pac-Man. Walked in the door. My dad said, come here. Y'all remember where we was in the text, right? Come here. First lady I ran from Pastor Joe. He didn't have his pastor hat on. He had his daddy hat on. I ran from him. Heard him walking by a bush I had hid under. Him breathing. I can imagine God 
in the Garden of Eden, seeing Adam go here and there from him in disobedience. So I ran to the church. I mean, no church is a good place to run to. <laughs> I don't know how my father found out I was at the church. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. Because they didn't have cell phones, Mari. <laughs> Boom, I heard the door. I'm laying down in the pew. I ain't sleep. I'm just hiding. It's missionary night, so ain't no young people there but me. <laughs> he came in, knew right where I was. Fourth row, grabbed me, put me in the car, got to the parking lot, the driveway in our house, he got out to open the gate. He said, you better not run. Walked in the house with him. And I did the crazy thing. I said, mama, stop him. So my father never whooped me, Mari. For the next two hours, Mother Jones lit me up. I ain't going to tell you what she had, but she lit a brother up. <laughs> The moral, the moral of the story. I don't know if my father was just going to talk to me. I didn't give him the chance. Oh, gosh. I didn't give him the chance to talk to me. I went on my own perception of what I thought that a father should do when a son is disobedient. Because the Holy Spirit can move on anybody. He could have just been like, you had fun down there, didn't you? I did the same thing when I was your age. Just don't do it again. But that's what's wrong with the world. We don't give God a chance to talk to us. To tell us it's okay. I get it. Just don't let it happen again. And guess what? Again and again, he'll give us grace. Now I got to close this text. We're ready for worship. What verse D? 13. 13 says, and he laid his hands on her. Somebody say immediately. <laughs> and immediately she was made straight. And glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. Watch this now. At the Sabbath day and said unto the people. There are six days in which men ought to work. Worship, worship. In them therefore come and be healed. But not on the Sabbath day. Do y'all see that? This woman been suffering how long? And somebody got the audacity to, to tell Jesus, amen, that he has done something wrong on the Lord's day? Hallelujah. How dare you? This is my day. What did the writer say? This is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And we shall what, rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah. Moving to close, it says, hallelujah, 15. The Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite. Y'all remember when we started out, right? The lady said, pastor, I ain't coming to the church no more. Too many hypocrites in the church. Here now, amen, Jesus replies to those, amen, that were critical of his healing. Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his donkey from the stall? And lead him away to get water? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all of his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced. For all the glorious things that were done by him. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we're all standing, Lord, we thank you for your word today.
Father, we thank you for the delivery of your word. Thank you for you imputing righteousness into our spirit. We don't own the rights to this music. Father, we thank you, God, because it is you that give us life and that more abundantly. It doesn't matter how we come, just as long as we come. This woman was broken, bowed down 18 years. And to her, I'm sure 18 felt like 30. Father, oh God, let there be fruit that we can eat and be blessed in this season. Lord, thank you for not cutting me off. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for not cutting me off. God, I thank you for giving me time to grow and to prune myself and to help others grow. Lord, oh God, as we surrender this service, thank you for allowing us to know that you're a righteous judge, that you want the best for us, that you're not coming with anger or condemnation, but you're coming with grace. Lord, we love you. We trust you. Forgive us today of all of our sins and shortcomings. For that, we're going to say thank you, Jesus. And we're going to give your name to pray. Save those that may be watching today. Someone might be watching right there in their home. Don't know the plan of salvation. And I'm going to tell you the simple plan. God loves you. He wants you to be saved. That is it. Cast off your burdens. Cast off your worries. Give them to Jesus. Come as you are. And he'll save you. Lord, we bless your name. This we give you praise and glory. And if you love the Lord, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.